Welcome everybody to our 115 webcast presentation. Hey everyone, welcome. <clears throat> welcome back to our 115 presentation. May I please have a mic check and a webcam check, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to our 115 webcast presentation. I'm just going to go over a day like today here real quick. You had that little up move in the morning, and just like we saw, breaking through day lows, trying to drag the market down. We were looking for so many weak signs, PCX, potential bankruptcy, obviously, and just so many things that have happened today. I actually see a few prints in PCX. Was it open momentarily? I see a 12 cent and a 27 cent print. Not sure if those are getting uh, broken or not, but just, uh, you know, you had a lot of things happening here today, and, um, you know, my day was really crafted by the community, and the first one I want to talk about here is call, and I'm just going to bring up my charts here. Excuse me while I do this. And you could just see exactly, I mean, we come with these trigger levels every single morning, obviously, you know, we don't come after the fact and show what you could have, should have, would have done, you know, we're buying it live here in the room, and you just saw what happened, you got that beautiful pullback to 20 bucks, that's the low of the day, and call, and then that beautiful beautiful extension uh, forward and was just really able to dominate this play probably not as well as I could have given the size I had um, you know when I saw a move like that you know I should have been up maybe three to six thousand dollars maybe forty five hundred you know on a play like that but still nonetheless um, was just able to milk $1,200. And then for me, really, I, I wasn't seeing much. I'm so focused on the broadcast. I only have, you know, two eyes, both of them white now, by the way, eight ball. And, you know, I was looking for other people to just really step to the plate today, as I always do. I rely on you guys you know, so much as you guys rely on us because, you know, it's just the community, and that is the bond, and that is the thing. QCore, HLF, RIM, DD, Fortinet, those names, those five names that you see right there just help tack on another, uh, what is it, around $1,500 to my P&L, and um, that's even taken in con uh, into consideration the minor losses. I took a $400 hit in r and was in the right direction. I tried it around five times and got stopped out with two to 4,000 shares in between there and just kept getting stopped out and just couldn't really make it. So you know what I did? I left it because if I kept trading it, I realized I was revenge trading it. You know, Shine had the right ideas. I should have definitely approached something like that via calls, I believe. That way, I know what risk is on the table. And if it does have the move, I do know that I shall be part of it. So let's just get into not revenge trading and things that you should say to remain optimistic and things that some of you trade should be doing. So we're going to start out here today. Five things that you should never say as a trader. Five things I never want to hear out of any trader's mouth. And you guys know traders, so I'm sure you'll look at this and you probably not only might have said it yourself a few times or many times, but you've heard other people say it too. So first thing to do, ah, uh, who cares? It's only a sim trade. Mm-mm. 
You must treat every trade as if you have a million dollars on the line. That is the right mentality. If you trade differently because you believe this monopoly money just doesn't matter until you start trading, you are wrong. Your trading results will always be inconsistent. To make matters worse, you'll even develop some horrible habits and, you know, such habits as, you know, saying that it's good to buy, you know, 100,000 shares of something at a dollar and piece it out at a dollar ten, even though you know you probably couldn't get that size and piece it out there on a normal account and you just do things like like that to show that you can make a million dollars obviously that is not the thing as the first thing I see as traders you should never say that that goes to the sim level now traders with this know-it-all bias ah, the market's gonna rally today the market's gonna pull in have you ever just known that the market was going up or known that the market was going down emotional biases like these are deadly to your trading confidence. In fact, what typically happens when you become stubborn and focus on one side of the market, you miss many opportunities that were very present in front of your face. Next thing, this market always stops me out. I am the guy walking out like a 300 gladiator who just survived the war against 100,000 people throwing spears at me. Look, the market always stops me out. You are the person who is endangered of dying of a thousand paper cuts. If you are the person that says that, then it shall be so. Don't think with that mentality. If you say that you're going, oh, I'm going to just get stopped out here, that negative attitude is what's going to happen. If you say it, it shall be so. If you focus on how bad things are, you'll just get more of the same. You must first come to terms with the fact that losing is indeed a part of trading. Sure, people have winning streaks that have lasted weeks, but eventually we all will lose here and there. And that is something very important. Show me a good loser, not a good winner. Or anybody could go <laughs> I made two thousand dollars today you know show me the person who you know maybe is not that cheerful when he loses two thousand dollars but is not sitting there you know hating life hating the world hating himself hating everything else and you know having a very pessimistic outlook nonetheless so if you're losing more than you're winning go back and find out if it's your system execution or your technicals. You have to revisit things that are not working for you and potentially change them to get at the level. You need the right tools in your arsenal. Another thing, I'm down $500 for the day. I have to go back and make it up. And not only do you have to go back and make it up, it's the stock that you lost it in that has to make it up for you. It's the same stock that took $1,000 from you that's supposed to give it back. How many people are like that with a, with a show of hands here? You know, this trade setup doesn't meet my rules, but I'm going to take it because I'm just waiting for an opportunity. I'm bored. It's the summer months, ladies and gentlemen. Boredom is one of the top killers in day traders. If you take trades just to do something, you'll never win in the end. You'll, you'll win one or two times, and those will be the worst victories of your life because all you're going to do is enforce a bad habit. Just keep this in mind. You don't need to be in a long or short trade to be actively trading. Being flat is indeed a position. And sometimes, and especially summer months, most of the time, are the best one never take a trade because you're feeling unproductive get up get a glass of water put your fist through the wall do some push-ups or take the dog for a walk because all of those things are going to be less painful than those mistakes so looking at the market today i just want to show a situation to those who actually just waited and stayed patient Technical analysis still remains the king of market analysis. Allowing traders to make high probability trades with very little risk is exactly what we look for. How many people were watching the queues break down here and said, wow, a descending channel support level broke and said that the likeliness is we're going to get a bounce here. We were talking long at the market by the very bottom. And the reason why um, I feel I was able to call at least the short term uh, bottom of the market at least for now was because of this you saw the volume elevation we talk about descending channel support volume elevating what happens when a descending channel support breaks most of the time especially in the past three months you get that retracement that 
bullish move back within the bearish channel, and that was a ton of, and you, and you don't even realize how many traders I just talked to who, you know, a move like this, that's what, that's all they needed on a day like today, just a well-timed long with a quick sell, and that is their day. Just keep in mind, be very satisfied and happy with every trade you make, because during the summer months, you have to be more intelligent and more technically savvy, because the boxes are going to have more majority control while other people are on vacation. You know who didn't go to the Bermudas, or you know who didn't go to Punta Cana and Dominican Republic, you know who didn't go there? Well, the black boxes that are trading. They're not going there this summer. However, a lot of traders are, and especially in a very heavy black box market, you'll realize if you do your technicals, it actually becomes easier to trade. It actually becomes simpler to trade. So for me, same shot, different day. Market respecting the technicals, breaks key levels, lets you know when to go in heavier, lets you know when to get out, and there was a ton of opportunity on the table there. I could have caught some, um, a lot more uh, further moves if I wasn't as stubborn on a day like today, but between uh, Shine talking about the research and motion levels, um, Pepe bringing up DuPont, Double D, uh, HLF off of the news coming in and chatting again, so many names, excuse me if I can't remember all of you yet, Q-Core, though, oh my goodness, what a nice heads up there. And, of course, the play, my favorite play, like mentioned in the pre-market, was Call. And it was a very easy long and a very nice rally up there in that name. So, hope you guys enjoyed this little webcast presentation. I hope you don't say some of the five things we talk about not doing. Happy trading, make money, and I will see you guys here on the live trading broadcast.